And so it's very similar to when you love someone and when you like someone and you're not aware of it because sometimes some guys have something called alexithymia. Also called emotional blindness is a neuropsychological phenomenon characterized by significant challenges in recognizing, expressing, and describing one's own emotions. It is associated with difficulties in attachment theory and interpersonal relations. Of not being aware of what they feel. They think they don't feel something when in reality they feel it. So when somebody likes you, there is pent up energy inside of them. And, and because you don't give them space, that energy doesn't go, doesn't, is not felt, is not registered. They like you, but they don't know they like you. So when you create space, then those emotions like, like a boss. Dear, dear Alex, I watch your videos often. My guy and I, both 30, have been dating for almost a year. We've had a few struggles, never fights. But situations where either where either of us where either of us pulled away for a week or so we both need our space from time to time the last few months were great and he said he wanted me in his future okay good since he really overthought it and rationalized what he likes about me last i felt intuitive something was wrong i asked him about it and told him we may need to we may need some space to figure things out. Okay. He told me he wasn't ready for something serious and that he was okay with the space. All right. You see, this is the thing, okay? A lot of the times when we create space, we think that we're doing something wrong because it doesn't work. What happens is that when you create space and the guy is happy to create the space, listen to me, man, we all have cognitive biases. We all want to believe that the person likes us. What do you think it means when you say, let's make some space and he's like, okay, like think about that. The whole time it meant that he really, he, that he liked you, but not enough to suffer at, in your absence. He liked you, but not enough to feel anxiety when you leave home. It, it, it's as simple as that. It is ease. Your coldness or distance should dawn on your targets when they are alone in the form of a poisonous doubt creeping into their mind. Their paranoia will become self-generating. Your subtle step back will make them want to possess you, so they will willingly advance into your arms without being pushed. This is different from the strategy in which you are inflicting deep wounds, creating a pattern of pain and pleasure. There, the goal is to make your victims weak and dependent. Here, it is to make them active and aggressive. Which strategy you prefer to use, the two cannot be combined, depends on what you want and the proclivities of your victim. Each gender has its own seductive lures which come naturally to them. When you seem interested in someone but do not respond sexually, it's disturbing and presents a challenge. They will find a way to seduce you. To produce this effect, first reveal an interest in your targets through letters or subtle insinuation. But when you are in their presence, assume a kind of sexless neutrality. Be friendly, even warm, but no more. You are pushing them into arming themselves with the seductive charms that are natural to their sex. Exactly what you want. You see, whenever you value some, something, anything, there's always an underlying fear. Almost, almost, like, almost like when racers are ready to hear the one, two, three, go. There's like a, almost like an energy pent up. Like when you're, in, when you're anxious or when you have, when you feel nervous or scared, blood rushes to your hands and, and feet, it rushes to your limbs. And so there'll be, you'll feel a rush of energy in your hands and feet. And sometimes that's felt in the form of fear of nervousness. And the reason why you feel that is to prepare your body to act if something comes up. So you move, right? You like, you're more twitchy, right? It, it removes energy, it removes blood from your stomach, right? So that you could, so it affects your digestion and it'll translate everything to those parts, to your limbs, right? And so a lot of, and so it's very similar to when you love someone and when you like someone and you're not aware of it because sometimes some guys have something called alexithymia where alexithymia is when you feel something but you don't know that you're feeling it, right? When you feel angry, but you don't know that you feel angry. You feel sad, but you don't know do you, you feel sad you have a disconnect between your brain and body and the people who experience lex, uh, alexithymia more is actually men of not being aware of what they feel they think they don't feel something when in reality they feel it 
so when somebody likes you there is pent up energy inside of them and and because you don't give them space that energy doesn't go doesn't is not felt it's not registered they like you but they don't know they like you so when you create space then those emotions like, like when you're anxious or scared and so you're ready you're ready to fight or flight right you're almost like at the edges when somebody likes you and you pull away all of a sudden you like snap you're like, oh my god oh oh, oh my god uh, i'm about to lose them and all of a sudden you start feeling emotions you haven't felt before painful emotion you start feeling anxiety your thoughts all of a sudden f you, you start thinking how amazing this person is how much you like them how much you don't want to lose them and that only happens when they like you that that only happens when they like you and that's what happens when you when you like someone now when they don't like you what would happen it's almost like it's almost like somebody who is not in a fight or flight mode which in this case feels emotions for you and then you get you walk up behind them and scare them but they don't move they don't react you say boo and, you, and they're like what dude right so when you pull away that's what happens why it's because they deep down they didn't like you a lot of the times that feeling of of love or liking is ready to arise it's almost like when you're cooking food right or even like when you have a kid right and like it's like the kid comes out in eight months but you could induce labor by giving the woman ox, uh, oxytocin right you could induce even though it's premature you could induce the love a little bit earlier by pulling away and by leaving but if he doesn't like you, I don't care how much oxytocin you give that woman, nothing's gonna come out of there. If you, I don't care how much you pull away from that guy, nothing's gonna come out. If the guy doesn't feel anxious, if the guy doesn't feel fear of losing you when you pull away, that means he doesn't like you. So you should pull away from time to time. And, and I always say people, look, 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 pull away because you have a life. Don't do it out of manipulation. Or be sincere, in other words, naturally, Sometimes you're going to pull away because things happen in life. You're either too busy, you're either too sad, or you, you're either you have to work or you feel sick. But when you like someone, you tend to push it to the limit. When you like someone, even if you feel sick, you go see them. When you like someone, even when you feel tired, you go see them. When you like someone, even if you feel depressed, you go see them. Don't do that. Allow yourself to feel what you feel and don't let the desire to see the person all the time be the one that controls you sometimes creating space through allowing natural circumstances to happen is what a relationship needs every relationship needs space that's why a lot of people broke up during the pandemic that's why you saw a lot of relationships that failed during the pandemic and most likely those relationships that failed during the pandemic they got back together and the reason why the reason why is was because they just needed some space it's like with your parents you you might think you hate them it's not that you hate them you just need space so that you, so some relationships need a certain amount of space and how do you know that because it's getting stale you can sense it they're getting too comfortable around you they, they stop taking care of themselves sometimes you need to scare them by by just living your own life like having your own space humans need moments of solitude you know so let's get back to the video Creating space will tell you what the guy feels about you. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't want to see, don't want to look at reality eyeball to eyeball and they want to look away. They want to live in denial. And so when the moment comes when you have to make space, you don't make it because you don't, it's like knowing that you're broke and you don't want to look at reality. That's pretty much what it means. Now look, the psychology behind romanticizing the past is called nostalgia. It's, a, it's pretty multifaceted because recalling positive events is an adaptive way of our brains to regulate emotions in the present moment and enhances optimism about the future. It's a mechanism that allows us to cope with current stress and difficulties by reminding us of the happy times and achievements. So it's almost like if somebody is, is broken and they're heartbroken, they can, they're not going to be in the present moment. They're not going to be in the now thinking about you or appreciating you. That what most often weighs you down and brings you misery is the past in the form of unnecessary attachments, repetitions of tired formulas, and the memory of old victories and defeats. You must consciously wage war against the past and force yourself to react to the present moment. 
Be ruthless on yourself. Do not repeat the same tired methods. Sometimes you must force yourself to strike out in new directions, even if they involve risk. What you may lose in comfort and security, you will gain in surprise, making it harder for your enemies to tell what you will do. Wage guerrilla war on your mind, allowing no static lines of defense, no exposed citadels. Make everything fluid and mobile. That's why when she broke up with him, it created that effect that I told you about. It, 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 it created a, a destabilizing effect on him and it made him want to go back to that future. Pretty much space nostalgializes you. It makes you into a nostalgic memory. And, in, and, and, and depending on his attachment style, it could imprint him where you become his type for the rest of his life or he'll look for an archetypical you someone that kind of vaguely reminds him of you if they squint hard enough so when they're not over their exes and they're taught and you're talking to them you're not you're in an uphill battle because they're not even looking at you they're not even looking at you and and there's a cognitive behavior scientist called jennifer uh Gurman, i think she said that there are several factors at play when we romanticize the past one is cognitive dissonance where we reconcile conflicting beliefs or behaviors by idealizing the past or the situations this can make us feel better about our current situation which means them not being with you which means them not being with you which means that they're having they're using it's almost like they use thinking of of their ex to kind of deal with the fact that they're not they're not with them but also it through contrast it diminishes you and you will sense it they're looking at you but they're not really looking at you right so this is this is why i tell people when somebody's not over their ex leave leave it's not worth it now romanticizing the past isn't always beneficial because it is a good pot it is a way to cope right it's almost like getting an antidepressant it's, it's it's not meant for ever I'm, don't listen to me about this but it's not meant for ever but it's meant to help you deal with the intensity so that when once the intensity goes away then you could deal with your depression in your own way I, that's why I, that's what i believe that's what i heard i may be wrong right but a lot of the times you have men who are chronically not over their exes men have a harder time getting over their exes than men than women do men have a harder time moving on that's why pulling away that's why creating space is so powerful right so it's not good because by you by her not being in his life it actually enhances the way he sees her because it creates distorted memories of the past which can become even even more source of suffering if they lead to unrealistic expectations or hinders them from moving forward so this is particularly true when people romanticize past relationships. This is what happens. They romanticize it. And the reason that they romanticize it is because they got dumped to the curve. So it is natural to do to do that. But if you encounter someone who's no who, who's not over their exes, man, I'm sorry. You have to leave them or hurt them, hurt them harder than the ex hurt them. And I don't want you guys to do that. That's evil shit. That's like past Alex. This is current Alex. We don't do that type of shit in this channel no more, people. <laughs> right but it is true right like if you want to help somebody get, get up with their exes you always have to break their heart even more so that then they can feel it's almost like if, if this hurts if this hand hurts you want to know how to not make this hand hurt that much hurt this hand more right but don't do that why not because karma is a bitch karma will get you i can promise you karma will get you so don't do that type of stuff and those people who are not over their past will sabotage their current relationships all the time. And those people who don't allow their, the, the person's self-sabotaging nature to destroy their relationship will also fall with them. The past will always, the past failures and past successes, if you take it wrong, will always sabotage you. What limits individuals as well as nations is the inability to confront reality, to see things for what they are. As we grow older, we become more rooted in the past. Habit takes over. Something that has worked for us before becomes a doctrine, a shell to protect us from reality. Repetition replaces creativity. 
we rarely realize we're doing this because it is almost impossible for us to see it happening in our own minds. Then, suddenly, a young Napoleon crosses our path, a person who does not respect tradition, who fights in a new way. Only then do we see that our ways of thinking and responding have fallen behind the times. Never take it for granted that your past successes will continue into the future. Actually, your past successes are your biggest obstacle. Every battle, every war is different, and you cannot assume that what worked before will work today. You must cut yourself loose from the past and open your eyes to the present. Your tendency to fight the last war may lead to your final war. So let's keep reading this, okay? And if you want to ask these types of questions, click on the description down below where it says purchase questions like these, and I can answer your questions, okay? Although he would miss... Okay, he said he was okay with the space, although he would miss me. Shut that fuck up. I mean, shut the hell up. No way. That's some, that's some BS. This guy is just a BSer. But when he sees me, it'll automatically evolve into something more casual than because we've got something unique and he couldn't go for it 100%. What? How you have something unique and scarce and you don't want to go for it 100%? You know, the, not, you know, the definition of scarce is that when you find something scarce, you don't let it walk away. You just don't. Imagine me like, oh no, somebody took the Mona Lisa. Oh no. Well, Chucks, I guess I'm gonna miss the Mona Lisa. Motherfucker, if you say that shit, I'm gonna think you stole the Mona Lisa. Like, come on, man. Right, let's keep reading, man. He said he wanted me to talk up her out of, he said he wanted you to talk her out of his head. Oh, okay. So he wanted to use you to help you get over her. And I told him it wasn't my responsibility exactly. But of course, I was really shocked. We've had our first fight, cried together, and then did the goodies afterwards. And he told me he was very unsure and couldn't think clearly. Okay, I accepted to give each other space and we're not talking to each other right now. I really have a lot of different thoughts right now and I am very confused because he told me he would emotionally block me off to protect himself. What the hell? What is he, enlightened? People, ladies and gentlemen, people don't, when it comes to, to love, people don't protect themselves. They don't care. They're, 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 they're like a, like, they're, they're just raw dog it, man. They don't give a fuck. Like, they, they take all the dumb risks you, you're not supposed to take. What? I really have a lot of different thoughts right now, and I am very confused because he told me he would emotionally block me off to protect himself. But a month ago, he was 100% and exactly. This is, the thing is, is that, well, let's read this, right? She said that we've been dating for almost a year. We've had a few struggles, never fights, but situation, either, but situations where either us pulled away for a week or so. We both need our own space from time to time. The last months were great. And he said he wanted me to, in his future. Aren't you, wait, weren't you guys in a relationship? You guys are not boyfriend and girlfriend? Oh my God, you guys were in a situation for a whole year? Oh, was I a rebound for someone from years ago? Most likely. Do not stay with someone who does not come into you after two or three months or even four months max if, if if a guy's saying i see you in my future and it's a year you guys been seeing each other what the hell is the future where is the future at where is this mythical place is it narnia is it there what my love let's, let's, keep, let's keep reading this Sh did, did our time together mean nothing no it did it everything everything has a purpose right and this purpose was for you to learn your lesson to not wait more than two or three months for a guy to commit and if he doesn't commit you gotta pull away man and you guys even and, and it, you know the thing you guys pulled away many times and he still didn't want to commit make this your lesson that you learned you already had a whole year to think about this don't repeat the same mistake don't repeat the same mistake ground yourself in the present moment and look at the situation. Don't look at your heart. Don't look at what you feel. Look at the situation. Observe. Notice the situation. This is not a guy that wants you long term. It's been a year already. And he's still not over his ex. In looking back on an unpleasant or disagreeable experience, the thought inevitably occurs to us. If only we had said or done X instead of Y. If only we could do it over. Even Prince Hohenloha years later, could see how he had botched the retaking of Wirtz and Heiligen. The problem, though, is not that we think of the solution only when it is too late. The problem is that we imagine that knowledge is what was lacking. 
If only we had known more. If only we had thought it through more thoroughly. That is precisely the wrong approach. What makes us go astray in the first place is that we are unattuned to the present moment, insensitive to the circumstances. We are listening to our own thoughts, reacting to things that happened in the past, applying theories and ideas that we digested long ago, but that have nothing to do with our predicament in the present. More books, theories, and thinking only make the problem worse. Understand. The greatest generals, the most creative strategists, stand out not because they have more knowledge, but because they are able, when necessary, to drop their preconceived notions and focus intensely on the present moment. That is how creativity is sparked and opportunities are seized. Knowledge, experience, and theory have limitations. No amount of thinking in advance can prepare you for the chaos of life for the infinite possibilities of the moment. Should I definitely move on or is, it, or is there still a chance for us? Listen, listen, up. listen no. come on, get closer, no. get closer. Come here, I said come scary. here. There you go, there you go. Listen, okay, listen. I really could, is there still a chance for us? No, all right? No, I'm not mean, Alex. It's just that what I want you guys to know is when there's no hope in a situation. This is what I tell you guys, get natural chemistry, which is for women in relationships or get the psychological game of attraction, which is for single women. Get them and do what this video say because they're only $99 and also because they work. They work. They work. You could avoid this situation. Man, you know how much time you could save if you knew exactly what to do? It's most of the problems, money and relationships. And if you just fix the relationship issue, which is usually self-sabotage, then you could focus on the other things in life. And it makes it makes the other things easier. Ay, ay, ay. Let's keep reading. I really could use some guidance in this situation. I really want to know what to do when he contacts me or I run into him. Run into him, huh? Because yesterday I saw him in my neighborhood. I'm, well, was he walking and whistling and walking a dog? I really sad because in my heart I want to give it another chance, but I need to know if there's still hope. What should I do to make things work? What should you do? Or what should he do? Listen, man, listen, 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 listen. It's been a whole year already and it, and nothing has came out of this. I am not trying to make you cry. I'm just saying this isn't it. Like, this is not it. He doesn't like you. He likes you, but not enough to want something more. Most likely he's not over his ex. Most likely he wants to be with her. In fact, most likely he even fantasized about being with her when he was with you. That, that happens a lot. Like I, I've. I've been guilty of that, you know, I'm not proud of that. I've been guilty of that. And most of us out there, you've been guilty. You too, Melissa, judging me from the, from the screen. You too, you, you've been guilty of that, but it's life. You know, you don't win them all. You really don't. So it's kind of like you have to move on from the situation. Space, listen to me, man. What, what space does to someone is that it, remi it reminds them and makes them feel what they really should feel for you. So if they're meant to like you, the space will, will will liven up their inner world. It will just create almost like a, a thunderstorm inside where they feel they, own, they need you to calm the storm. But if they don't like you, that space will bring relief. Ladies and gentlemen, I felt a lot of relief for some women who, who left. I'm like, thank God she left, holy crap. And it's not that I'm a me person, right? But it's just that some people are not compatible with me. And some people have thought the same about me people. I, I believe that. And that and that's okay, right? I am not for everyone. And so what, what space does is that it's not, a, it's not a spell, it's not a witchcraft where all of them will like you. What it'll do, it'll clear up the smoke and you'll know exactly how he feels about you. It's just that simple. And this guy doesn't seem like he's that interested. There's no sense of urgency, man. It really isn't. And, and you have to accept that. You have to see it for what it is and move on, you know, and move on from the situation. Your optimism will always bring you back. That's just human nature, right? Your optimism. But don't lie to yourself. Don't deceive yourself. Don't let your cognitive bias have, get the best of you and just move on, all right? Carl von Clausewitz called this friction, the difference between our plans and what actually happens. Since friction is inevitable, our minds have to be capable of keeping up with the change and adapting to the unexpected. The better we can adapt our thoughts to changing circumstances, the more realistic our responses to them will be.
The more we lose ourselves in pre-digested theories and past experiences, the more inappropriate and delusional our response. It can be valuable to analyze what went wrong in the past, but it is far more important to develop the capacity to think in the moment. In that way, you will make far fewer mistakes to analyze. Your only principle, similarly, should be to have no principles. To believe that strategy has inexorable laws or timeless rules is to take up a rigid, static position. That will be your undoing. Be brutal with the past, with tradition, with the old ways of doing things. Declare war on sacred cows and voices of convention in your own head. Erase the memory of the last war. The last war you fought is a danger, even if you won it. If you are victorious, you will tend to repeat the strategies you just used, for success makes us lazy and complacent. If you lost, you may be skittish and indecisive. Do not think about the last war. Instead, do whatever you can to blot it from your mind. And before I leave, I want to tell you, it takes courage to, to ask me these questions. And I want to say thank you. And I want to tell you that every time we're in that situation, it feels like it's never going to end. Negative emotions and intense positive emotions warp time in our minds. And we feel like the negative emotions are going to last forever. But we never do the things, we, we never do the same thing for positive emotions. You're, right now, you might feel like this is going to last forever and that this, you're not going to be able to handle it. But I want to tell you, you can handle it. You are strong. You are meant to deal with trauma. You have come from a sea of ancestors who, who dealt with trauma, who overcame it. It is in your DNA. You have this. You got the strength. The only thing that you could do from this situation is learn from this and become stronger. Anything else is not an option. You got this. All right? You got my channel. Just do what the videos say. Do what the videos say. Try something new. And you'll notice that if you just do exactly what I say in my videos, your dating life is going to be easier. Don't be scared. Don't be scared of losing people. All right? I know I sometimes come across like I'm mean, but in reality, it's just the way I give love. I'm a tough lover. All right? And the only reason why I gave you that tough love it's because I know inside of you, there's a part of you that knows it's true. And there's a part of you that if you just embrace the tough love that I'm giving you, it will toughen you up and make you even stronger. You'll come out of it almost grateful because now, sometimes we need to go through these situations to learn our lessons, man. We're hard-headed when we're in love. And there's no shame of with being in love with somebody who's not good for us. We're only humans, all right? Don't feel bad about that. I've done that. I've fallen in love with people who I shouldn't have fallen in love with. I've gotten heartbroken. You guys don't know this, but you know, I've gotten my heart broken many times. Well, it's kind of, maybe it's kind of obvious, right? I've gotten my heart broken many times. And every time that's happened, I've learned from it and grown from it. I became resilient from it. And I wouldn't be who I am today with those, without those negative quote unquote experiences. Anyways, you guys, what, don't forget we're having a seminar in London. You can see the, the dates is at the end of the month. Purchase your tickets. And we're having seminars all around the United States. You can see the dates here. It's going to be this year and next year. The next one is going to be in New York City, right? And um, and don't forget, if you guys ever want to work with me one-on-one -on -one in private or like this, click in the description down below and I'll see you guys there. Finally, people, Emotional Mastery is out. This is a this is my, my favorite course that I've created. It took me over three years. This course is everything that I teach, the mindfulness aspect of this channel, the most important aspect is, and if you are needy, if you're somebody who has a, an insecure attachment style or an attachment style that sabotages your relationship, if you're unable to connect with people, if you, if you have a lot of anxiety. Because I also was a needy person. I also used to chase people when they used to pull away. If you're always baited into chasing when a guy pulls away and you cannot control that pattern, if your neediness always sab sabotages you, if you're too hard, emotionally too hard or emotionally too soft, this course is the course for you. If you have a hard time applying the strategies that I teach and you know what you have to do, but for some reason emotionally you can't, 
this course is specifically made for that. And the strategies that I've learned over the last five years are in this course. The basic, the basic package is a five week course. In each week, you, one, you're gonna be able to join a WhatsApp group where you could contact me and I'll help you out through the course and you can ask me questions and I answer those questions on Zoom or I'll make a video and add it to the course. But the point is this course is specifically geared towards people who feel like they need to master their emotional life. So the basic package, as we can see here, this is all of the things we're gonna learn on this course. And the, we have three packages. One, we have the basic package, which is 199. And the next package, 299, which is a bronze package, where so you get the five week course, you, you get the, uh, the walking meditation, the compassion meditation, the breathing meditation. It, these are long meditation sessions that you guys can listen to. The what's next meditation, Jesus Christ. The teachings of the Buddha, which is pretty much a four week. It's not gonna be four weeks to be honest with you. We, we might extend it. We might make this course longer, like even a few months to be honest with you. But for, but for now, this is the course. Four week series after the course that you get where I will be teaching you guys straight from the from the teachings of the Buddha. It's like Bible class people, because I was a Bible teacher before. Or you get the the the, the 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 platinum package, where not only do you get all of those bonuses, but also you get a complimentary one-on-one -on -one call with me at half price, along with three bonus meditations on top of all of the ones that you have. The bronze package, $299, and the platinum package at $3.99. So click on the description down below to purchase it right now, and I'll see you guys inside. I swear to God, you, if you do what this course says, neediness, out the window. I am so sure you have a 14 day money back guarantee. Because if you don't like the first two classes, people, the first two classes are like I are one of the biggest bangers in terms of like spiritual content that you ever see. I know that for sure. And if you don't like the first two classes, unfortunately, you're not gonna like the rest of the course. I'll give you your money back, no questions asked. Because if you like the first two classes, I, I know for sure everything else in that course is going to be worth it because they are the same quality and even better. To I can promise you that, ladies and gentlemen. So click on the description down below where it says purchase emotional mastery so that you can start with your first week and you can add yourself to the WhatsApp group and I'll see you guys inside. I'm so excited for you.